Hi guys! So today I have a cute little snow princess character for you and I say snow princess cause I have every intention to do a full on ice queen at some point. So this one is just kind of a few stages below ice queen and maybe sits more within the realm of like winter fairies or that kind of thing. So starting with the skin, I've already applied a primer and here I'm just adding a peachy coloured under eye corrector just to cancel out any of the dark colours under there. Next I'm going in with a concealer, just my regular concealer because I have a border of spots around my head right now from all of the chocolate I've been eating lately and all of the beanies I've been wearing. I wanted to go with a natural pale which is basically my skin tone anyway so I was just using my regular products and I added a few other products just to brighten my usual foundation. So I've been using Benefit's High Beam underneath my foundation recently because it makes you glow but you have to work with it quickly for it not to set in streaky lines because it does kind of set. So I apply in one area and then I add the foundation and then I move on to the next area of my face. So for me adding this underneath my foundation really helps it last longer and it also looks really good. Do you see it? Do you see the glow? So pretty. Next I'm adding some white foundation on there too and I don't like this foundation very much which is why I only really use it in costume looks but it's the only white one I have at the moment. Next I'm going to conceal underneath the eyes and then I'm going to set that with a translucent powder and I'm also going to take that over any kind of creasy and greasy areas too. I use my NYC translucent powder because I know that it's good for stopping creasing and it also photos really nicely but I'm also going to add some white powder as well just to help my skin look a tad paler. Next I'm highlighting and this is Virgin by Urban Decay and this is super old school for me. This used to be my go-to highlighter back in school when I would just use my naked palette for everything. So I'm going to add a little bit of shape back into my face since we've added that flat colour. So here I'm going to add this kind of pinky taupey colour underneath my cheekbones but then I'm going to go over it with the white to make it more grey. You could totally just go in with a grey eyeshadow that's going to do the same kind of thing um, but I just wanted to use this Meron palette. And you also just want to take this wherever you usually add contour. So for me that's down my nose and underneath my bottom lip. Next I'm adding a bunch of blush on the apples of my cheeks and the tip of my nose. Moving on to the brows, I'm first going to add a bit of definition since I don't have much of a brow shape or a brow tail and then I'm going to add a white liner over the top to simulate snow and you want to apply this really lightly so it sits on top of the hair. Don't try to work this into the brows or anything, I wouldn't brush it through with a wand or anything, just kind of sit it on top as if like the snow had just fallen and just sat on top of those brow hairs. While that line is still wet and has a bit of stick to it, you want to throw some glitter on there as well. So after prepping the lid with a primer and a base colour, I'm going to take that pinky taupe colour again and start to take that through the socket, really roughly on a big fluffy brush, just to add some kind of shape in there. Next I'm applying this shimmery pink base on the lid and it's not entirely necessary but I wanted to try it and then I'm applying this lovely pink shadow over the top. Um, I don't get much use out of this Sigma palette in day to day looks but every time I use it I remember how much I love it and I wished I did wear this kind of look on a day to day basis because these pastel -y colours in this palette are lovely. Next up I'm taking a purple and I'm applying this in the inner corner and then I'm applying a light blue in the outer V area and connecting the two in the middle. Typically I would apply the darker at the outside and the lighter colour on the inside but it all just flows together so nicely that it doesn't really matter which side you put it, it kind of just looks like it belongs there. Of course I'm going to finish off the lid with some extra sparkles so here I'm applying a glitter liner, kind of like an adhesive and then throwing over some cosmetic glitter over the top. 
Here I'm applying a metallic gold liner, but you can skip this bit. I just did it on the other side, so I had to do it on this side too. Um, but I'm going to go over it with a silver in a second, so I'll just go ahead and do that now instead. Then I'm running a white liner across the waterline and then really working that down into the lashes. Then I'm going to take a silver liner like I mentioned before and just going over that in a corner and also running that underneath the eye. And then over the top of that liner I'm going to apply that lovely light blue eyeshadow again. Doesn't this colour remind you of like the 90s or the early 2000s? I remember having so many cream eyeshadows and stuff in this colour. Next I'm taking that glitter liner underneath the eye and I'm adding some of that glitter over top as well. Picking up some of that virgin eyeshadow again, I'm applying that as a highlight um, underneath the brow and in the inner corner. And do you see how it's such a lovely frosty highlight? It's really nice for pale skin. So for my lashes, I prepped these beforehand, so I just put some white liquid liner on the tips and then use that as a glue to adhere the glitter. So as I was watching this back, there was something I didn't quite like about the look and I couldn't work out what it was because the makeup itself I feel is very pretty, although it's weird I know, but it's very pretty. Uh, but I thought maybe it was the dark hair or something because I usually don't like light makeup with dark hair, but I think I've worked it out. The eyes need to be lighter, so bear that in mind if you wear this as a character because I thought my eyes were quite light, but this makeup makes them look darker. So I imagine something like the Desio lenses in white would really complement this character. Um, I've never tried them myself, but I hear nothing but good things about them, so that kind of thing would probably really help this look. Next, I'm adding what ended up looking like cute little snow freckles, so I decided to just roll with it. I dotted on the liquid liner and then I just patted um, with my finger and it picks up the product and transfers it. At this point it would be really nice if you added some effects ice crystals or flakes of snow or something. I tried to make some but I didn't really like how they turned out this time so I'm going to try something else next time when I do my eyes queen. For the lips I wore a gloss because I wanted them to be nice and simple since there's so much going on already. Uh, this gloss looks insane here but it's basically just clear. Moving on to the hair and the body, I decided to use a hairspray for both. Uh, since the hairspray is skin safe, as it's fine to use on your scalp, I decided I'd use that on my shoulders too. Uh, this bottle sprays out random blobs, which is actually pretty perfect for looking like snow. To get a similar effect, you could use a flat layer of uh, white face paint or body paint, and then you want to speckle some of that over the top of it with a brush. Um, the best brush you can use for this is a toothbrush. You just want to kind of dip it in the white paint and then you can kind of flick it on. I have a weird little section in my makeup storage just dedicated to toothbrushes. Uh, most of them are covered in blood though, to be fair. It's rarely snow. <laughs> So, these earrings I'm excited about, I made these icicle earrings out of a hot glue gun and tin foil and glitter. So ignore the colour of this one on the left, it's kind of a bit yellowy, um, I ended up redoing it but I'll explain why in a second, he's just there for size reference. So I laid down some foil and then I use hot glue to create the shape. Before that glue dries, you want to wax some glitter on there and then leave that layer to dry and then do it again. After a couple of layers, I peeled it off the foil, or I attempted to peel it off the foil. At first, I was so mad that the foil wouldn't come off because it had done before on the other one I made, but having that foil inside the icicle actually made it look way more white instead of that pale yellow like the other one. So embrace the tin foil. So now you can build up the sides and just keep adding layers of glue until you're happy with the shape. And then you want to pop one of these little earring hooks in the top and I was going to say you're done, but you're not. You want to do this at the end as well. Put a little blob, let it dry a little bit, and then you can pull it down. And it legit looks like the end of an icicle. It's great. I did a very similar thing for the crown I made. I made the icicles, connected the icicles, covered my whole house in glitter, added some little snow covered leaves, and then I used a curling clip actually to attach it to my head. Uh, I'd recommend attaching it to a headband, but I just didn't have one at the time. But then that's it, a cute little snow fairy princess kind of thing. <laughs> I'm not sure what I'm gonna call it yet. 
let me know what you think. I really hope you like the look and thank you guys for watching. Bye.